When I think about where we started at Samuel Merritt University in Oakland, California, we were just uncertain about where to start the process of our journey to competency-based education. And so we first started off with taking time to understand really what is competency-based education and how do the new essentials play into this? And so we had a dedicated team that we called internally Domain Champions, and we wanted to meet frequently so that we can understand what is competency-based and what's the best fit and model in terms of how do we educate the rest of the faculty at Samuel Merritt University and ourselves. And we began to have weekly meetings with the team beginning nearly a year ago, actually. And so everyone was excited. However, we were just in the same place of really attempting to understand what is competency-based. And we held weekly meetings for up to a full year and a half. And then we decided to have um, a workshop on campus, which was really great, well attended. For those who had not attended any of our weekly meetings, they were able to come and participate in the workshop. And we had faculty with varying levels of understanding about competency base because some of the faculty were teaching or had other obligations and could not attend our weekly sessions. So it was a chance to really exchange ideals, meet, talk about it, make changes in what they thought they wanted to include in terms of the mapping alignment. So it worked out really well. Um, but again, it was a process and definitely a journey. But now we're into our second year. We still have a few challenges and how do we gain consensus and bringing everyone up to speed, but it's definitely moving forward. And that's something that we're definitely so proud of. We have this big vision that we were going to complete all of our mapping within three to six months. That was not realistic, although we had high hopes. And so it just caused us to pause and think about what's another approach. And so we changed our approach a few times just to make sure that we're accommodating all of our faculty needs and levels of understanding about competency base because we, our small team, were well informed. However, that was not true for all of the faculty. And the lessons learned was just that we needed to slow down just a bit because we thought we could move very fast with this work. We thought that we had a clear understanding um, based on looking at the essentials, looking at the sub-competencies, creating key assignments. And, and then we realized, wait a minute, not everyone's on board, so we can't change that unless we seek consensus. And so that was definitely a lesson learned. We also learned that we can move forward. However, we have to seek the approval of our UCC, which is our University Curriculum Committee, before we make any um, changes. And then we have to submit to the BRM. And so we didn't really allow that time factor into the changes that we wanted to implement. We were a little bit ahead early on because we were able to um, pilot a few courses. Hearing from our practice partners that our students, our graduates were not quite practice ready, though some of the graduates were um, lacking confidence, resilience, and this is, of course, just coming out of the pandemic, so it's understandable. And then they were seeing a trend of students not completing the residency programs. And so we had to shift gears and we added a mindfulness-based stress reduction course. And we thought it was perfect. But once you get feedback from the students, it's like, wait a minute, oh, this is not great. So we revised that course and the student feedback was really vital to ensuring that we make changes. We did include students on in our planning so that we can have the student voice and understanding about what is that one semester like when we've added mindfulness-based stress reduction. We also changed a few courses and called those courses role-based professional practice. We wanted to make sure that we were graduating um, graduates, students from Samuel Merritt that really understood the role of professionalism. Because again, we listened to our practice partners and we took what they said to heart. Those were hard lessons to hear about our students, right? But it's we appreciated learning about what was happening.
In addition to using Domain 3 Population Health, we selected Domain 9, which is Professionalism. And we selected Domain 9 Professionalism based on our practice partners' feedback and also some of the concerns that we were noticing um, in our students um, and the level of engagement with faculty, staff, and their other colleagues, as well as the nurses in the hospital. And so we decided to uh, create courses that focus on professional role development of the nurse, not just in one semester as we've previously had, but we wanted to make sure that we offered professionalism in every single semester of the pre-licensure coursework. And I'd have to say we were successful in, in implementing this as a pilot. We have um, pulled that course for the meanwhile, just so that we can revise some of the assignments just based on student feedback again, that it was a little bit too heavy in terms of the coursework and the assignments. And so those courses have been revised and are in the process of being revised for one of those courses. Um, we are looking at change in our community health course to call it population health. There's so much of an interest in the community as well as global health nursing. And so we have a dedicated uh, community health faculty that are on board to change the title to population health. It really helps stretch our students thinking beyond just what's happening in the community, but what's happening globally and what, how does this impact the health Field, the health career of nursing, excuse me. And so we're excited, we're moving ahead. We haven't quite solidified our key assignments yet for that, but we are still working uh, diligently on what does the new population course look like in terms of aligning to the essentials and creating a new course, right? If you can't just keep the old, you wanna enhance what we have already but also create new ideals and new understandings and new ways of helping our students grow and understanding population health. In terms of professionalism, again, we listen to our practice partners and we're still hearing concerns about some of the professionalism, not so much in a negative sense, but more so in terms of our students feeling confident enough to use their voice, ask questions, advocate for their patients, and so we want to make sure we help those students understand the value and importance and significance of their voice as a registered nurse in the field of nursing. In terms of um, engaging our practice partners, we have um, selected three because we have uh, pre-licensure programs on three different campuses. And so we wanted to make sure that we capture the perspective and the needs of our practice partners in the three different regions. And each of the three um, shared you know, similar concerns and we acted upon those and we asked for examples, concrete examples. We've asked for a few listed items so that we really can understand how do we best share this with the faculty and with the students and how do we make changes to meet uh, their, the practice partners' needs. And so we realized, again, as I mentioned earlier, that we weren't quite far enough along in terms of all faculty or the majority of faculty understanding what CBE is. And so we decided to hold off on inviting the practice partners to those sessions. We didn't want to waste the practice partners' time. We needed to shore up our understanding to make sure that we had a good sampling of faculty that knew what sample um, competency-based education is and had um, created examples in their class, key assignments, made their alignment, uh, complete their alignment, excuse me, so that we can share what we're doing. And then I shared what the practice partners have shared with me um, previously with the faculty so they can take that into consideration. Now we're going to be holding our second workshop and it's mandatory. And so we've already engaged our practice partners and let them know that we are now ready for them to join us in a all faculty in-person meeting. Now they may not be able to attend in person, so we will definitely hold a, a Zoom uh, a capability so they can participate. We have had meetings, which may have been just two or three of us faculty members and meeting with our practice partners 
and uh, two of us you know, faculty sit on an advisory committee with one of our practice partners. And so we get to hear those concerns directly and take that back to our team. So it's been a smaller group meeting with our practice partners, but now we're ready if we can have each of our three practice partners in the room at the same time with the faculty. I think we'll find that we can move pretty far ahead because I'm imagining that what they've been telling us individually as we meet with our smaller groups with the practice partners, we'll hear this, the faculty will be able to hear the same resounding, here's what we want in order to have a practice ready graduate come and work for our institution. So it's, it's a work in progress. So we're moving ahead though, of course, but it's definitely a work in progress. In terms of the move towards um, practice ready graduates, we're excited about the change. We're excited about implementing competency-based education model and framework into our curriculum across all of the programs that we offer at Samuel Merritt University and in particular right now for our pre-licensure students. We are listening to our practice partners, we are listening to faculty and students, and we are excited about making the change. I believe our in-person um, faculty workshop was, the, was set so that everyone realized they can work together and complete uh, a new curriculum or just minor changes to their courses and really help graduate and prepare, prepare and graduate our students um, to be ready to go out in the field and work. We keep hearing the term practice ready. We want practice ready from all of our clinical partners, our community-based partners and clinics. And so we're excited that we'll be able to contribute to meeting their needs of what they're seeking in graduates. Many of our faculty attended the um, UCLA session uh, held by AAC and the workshop on competency-based education. I was able to get 18 faculty down at UCLA from the Bay Area to Southern Cal, and the excitement and joy that we experienced was phenomenal. And there was a term that was used that as we had our private meetings and it's like, let's just ride the high. We're so excited and engaged. Let's ride the high. Let's share this excitement with our practice partners so they can understand we are working. We are very committed to graduating practice ready graduates and to meet their needs. When I think about what's most exciting for my faculty at Samuel Merritt, it's the joy of working together. We decided to meet by Zoom for most of our weekly meetings throughout all of last year in 2023. Um, but it was not until we decided to meet all in the same room and meet together and listen to just additional level of understanding and training that we provided internally but also having the breakout sessions where they met with their content groups to work on what do they really want their student to know by the time they complete their course. And then the engagement of understanding, well, what do you teach in the semester before my course? And what are you teaching in the semester after my course? That was exciting. I could just hear the, the laughter, the discussions. I took video um, shots and photos just to share with the faculty as a whole. But that working together in person was the key. It seems like that added to the new level of understanding what CBE is and what can be done. And that if we work together, we can complete this. And what I would like record time, but that's not realistic, but I'm very happy about the progress that we've made so far.